Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and it is new project day. Yay! And those of you who are following the stair car, don't worry, the stair car is continuing to be worked on. I just like to have a couple projects kind of on the go. So, this one, according to the little schedule in my head, and I know I've said I don't like to make schedules, but I was planning on doing this video just around Christmas time. So we're about a month and a half after that. And why was I planning on doing it then? Uh, basically to celebrate two things. This was the first kit review I did on the channel. It was actually the second video we put up. Um, our crazy dog was the first one we put up. This was the first, uh, the first kit review that I did and I put online. So I thought it would be nice to mark two years of the channel being up by starting to build this kit. And as well as that, beginning of December, we passed the 1,000 subscriber mark. So I thought this would be another thing to help mark that momentous occasion. I think we're about 1,180 right now as I'm recording this. So basically, I'm not going to go over all the parts in detail i'm not going to go over all the instructions and everything because there's there's a review so if you haven't already seen the review right around uh, here there should be a little tab coming up and if you click on the tab it should take you to the review of a models mill mi10 and for those people who are new to the channel or who maybe haven't uh, uh, really explored the channel homepage that much yet, all of my videos are on a playlist somewhere, somehow. So if you're kind of thinking, geez, have I seen all of the kit reviews? If you go onto the playlist with the kit reviews, or anything that's a kit review will be on that playlist. And if you're not sure if you've seen all of the builds or all of the projects, once again, you can go down the playlists and every project is listed on there. Same thing uh, for random stuff that's commentaries and stuff like that. Kits I'm afraid to build or I'm afraid to start. There, there's a playlist for that as well. Because once a channel gets to a certain size and you're looking at two, three hundred videos, and we're not anywhere near there yet, it gets kind of hard to get caught up to say, okay, I want to see everything that's on this channel. And you have to, like, you know, scroll your way all the way to the bottom of the list of videos. So I'm trying to make sure everything appears at least on one playlist so that you can sort of say, all right, I'm going to work my way through all the kit reviews, if that's what you feel like doing. If you basically say, oh, I want to see all the projects, you can basically, you know, watch all the projects all at once sort of thing. You can say, okay, uh, th I haven't seen this project yet. You can go through that playlist. So I've been trying to keep things organized like that to make it easier for people to see everything they might want to see. So if you've seen the kit review, you probably know by now that this is a great big huge impressive box and pretty much all the sprues are really small and you have a bunch of empty space in here. So get the instructions. Anything important I need to see here? Okay, don't eat the parts. Right. And lots and lots of sprues here and oddly enough we're starting with the cockpit. And I'm probably going to have to make a little bit of space over on the clutter zone. Because I like to keep this, this workbench over here clear for filming and large assemblies and things. Although, if this kit isn't large, I don't know what is. How big is this thing anyway? So I quickly look around for the measuring stick. Yeah, the fuselage alone is about 18 inches on this thing, so that's pretty long. 
So we've moved to the clutter zone, at least for our smaller sub-assemblies. And anyone who's worried that the uh, stair car is not being worked on, it's still very much in the picture here. He's just moved off to the side. I've been working actually more on the steer car than I planned this week, so I actually have not been doing quite as much on the MI-10. Um, one thing I should mention, if I didn't already in the um, if I didn't already in the review, is there's no part numbers on the sprues, so you want to be able to quickly refer to the sprue maps they give you because you're going to be referring to them a lot especially with some of the sprues that contain like this one does many many little fine fiddly bits that look very similar so I've got the basic cockpit together I haven't done anything with the instrument panel yet because it doesn't get assembled till later. And I've basically just used a variety of grays. The radio stack, the background I painted flat black, and the fronts of the consoles I painted semi-gloss black. I've not yet put the decals on the uh, flight engineer's position. I'm about to do that. Uh, one thing that's a little confusing is... The instructions show the pilot and the co-pilot seats as being put together out of separate pieces, but they actually give you those pieces as one full assembly. And all of those parts you see on there are completely usable from the sprues. You just have to be very careful with their cleanup. And that includes the armrests. And if you're thinking, I only see three, that's because the carpet ate the fourth one. So, but I think overall that's not going to be too noticeable if you can't see that. So I'm just about ready to move on to putting the decals on the flight engineer's position. There's the basic assembly of our cockpit done. And if I turn it that way, you can see the substantial gauges and instrumentation and controls that the flight engineer has. Now this part gets set aside for a few steps while we get the engines and things completed, but I think this is pretty much looking the way I want it to. And of course, as always with 170 second scale, you do all this effort on the inside and then you can almost never see any of it. One thing that has slowed me up a little bit is we can see in this step and in this step there's some parts that are basically the inlets to the turbine engines and the exhausts of the turbine engines. And when I looked at those parts it struck me that they were really, really, they were real gems. And the sort of parts that you're thinking, you know, that might come in handy at a future date. So what I did, I glued them down to one of my basins that I use for making molds. And I figured, you know what, this would probably be a, a good thing to have as a future part. So if we look at them, you can see, and these are obviously the parts I'm going to be using. I'm not going to use the resin castings. But how many times have you looked inside the air intake of a 172nd scale jet or something and said, you know, it'd be nice if I could see something decent in there. You know what? These parts could certainly be modified to be used for future projects. So I thought, well, now I've got a mold for those parts. I don't know. I might use it next week. I might use it in three years time, but at least I've got copies of those. Now this particular mold Probably isn't 100% dry. It still looks a little creamy, but it's not like I'm using it anytime soon anyway. I've pre-painted the front of the engine turbines prior to putting them in the air inlets because I figure once I put them in here, I'm never going to be able to actually get them painted. 
And before I assemble them, I'm also going to paint the inside of these air inlets. Now, the back of the engine is quite interesting in the way it goes together. You can see that there's the, the exhaust turbines there, and then they've got these shafts coming off of them. And any sort of a turbine, turbo shaft engine has an arrangement similar to this because you've got to get that, that spinning motion here has to be sent out to a gearbox. And the way that A model has set this up is actually fairly clever in that there's some pieces that mount on here to make sure that the um, that, that these hollow bits, you're never going to see those. As a matter of fact, if I show you on the instructions, you can see the way they go together. There's the piece with the exhaust turbines, and then these go on them. Now, if you look on here, you can see that you're supposed to put these little fin deals in, and the idea is that they're to help support the shaft. Now, they show those going in, and you're kind of trapping them all together, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently, and I'll show you how. These are the exhaust nozzles here, and you can see that there's a slot in them, and basically that's where that little vein that goes through, that support strut goes through. So I figured what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up just enough so that I can actually slide those veins in from the outside, and then that way I can actually glue together these pipes as I try to do this with my total lack of dexterity. This way I can glue these together, I can get them all nice and smoothly finished. And then I can actually slide them in place. So this can be pre-painted, this can be pre-painted. I can glue it in, and then the very last thing that we'll do is we'll just slide those veins in place. So now that we've got these glued in place, you can see how the The exhaust actually fits over the, I guess best way to describe it is the drive shaft going to the transmission. And you can actually see inside there, it's tough to see with the light just not hitting right, but you can see almost all the way in there. There's a better view. You can see the shaft running through the exhaust, which is the way these things are really set up. It's just most model makers don't bother showing the output shaft going through the exhaust like this. So what you see here is three of the veins that go from the outside of the exhaust to the drive shaft housing inside the exhaust. Now you're probably thinking, wait a minute, three? Shouldn't there be four? Two for each side? Yeah, well, the carpet monster got one. Oddly enough, though, it's all good because while looking for the missing vein, I found this guy right here. That's the exhaust from the MI4 that I lost in the carpet, oh, a year ago. So even though I've since made a replacement, it is kind of nice to know that I found it. And so the fronts of our engines join the long list of things that nobody will ever appreciate. If you catch, a li if you catch the light just right, you can see the fronts of the engines inside the inlets, but then I'm sure they have lots of company in that respect. Modelers were always building things that nobody will ever see. And here's the assembly for the exhausts. And once again, you really, really have to peer deep inside there to see the turbines. At least you can see the, the shaft going out through the back of the exhaust, which I think is the main thing. Continuing work on various air intakes and things. This is the top of the actual engine cowling. And this air intake here is actually uh, leads into the transmission. And I believe this is basically a cooling duct to keep everything up there, you know, from overheating. Now, the center part here that's a separate piece that goes on from inside. And then 
you can see that this is a, a part that's been added on top. Needed a little bit of work to get a good fit, nothing too serious. Uh, but overall, the detail on this kit is pretty amazing considering that it's, as they say, a short run kit. Well, it doesn't seem like much progress for one episode, but when you're only working on things for maybe about an hour a day, if you're lucky, you have to take what you can get. So far, I'm really happy with the way things are fitting on this kit. Been no real issues with things having serious modification or anything like that, and the cockpit really came together nicely. So, until next time, thanks for watching Dan's Model Works, and keep on modeling. The weight update will follow.